Happy New Year guys, Carmine here. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the locomotive I got for Christmas. This is the Lionel C&O F19 Pacific. The one I have is actually lettered and numbered for the George Washington. The item number is 6-11108. It was available in the Lionel 2007 Volume 2 catalog. Just a little background on the real locomotive. It, these locomotives were developed by the C&O in the 1930s. They were developed to pull their heavyweight passenger trains. The locomotive I have here, it actually hauled the George Washington, as you'll see later on in the video. The train has special signage and different, you know, graphics and stuff on it that indicate that was the train that it did haul. But they had numerous of these locomotives, so they did haul everything from the George Washington to the Sportsman, all different things like that. The George Washington was also um, one of the first all air conditioned trains. It ran from Cincinnati, Ohio to Washington, D.C which operated over 599 miles, and it was developed in the depths of the Great Depression. The interiors of the cars were actually decorated in Heppelwhite and Duncan Flight furnishings, so they were kind of reminiscent of colonial times, which obviously goes very well with the George Washington name. All right, so some of the things the locomotive has inside of it, it is TMCC, Rail Sounds 5.0, obviously it has your standard crew talk, and what this has with the Rail Sounds 5.0 is the older TMCC locomotives, like let's say the Alton Limited set and some of the older things like that, it didn't have a prototypical four chuffs per revolution. To my knowledge, the older ones had two chuffs, which it's not a deal breaker, but I like it a little bit more prototypical, so this was another positive for me. It is Dyna chuff, so it does go through the different levels of intensity as the locomotive um, goes from a stop to a... Uh, Track speed also has what they call multi-whistle. Now, this was before they developed the quilling whistle. Multi-whistle simulates basically the whistle blast at different steam pressures. I'm going to try and emulate that for you guys here when I um, do the sound um, review in here. It's not always consistent. It happens at random, but I get it. It's supposed to happen at random because it's like different pressures in the boiler. It has a fat boy speaker in the tender, so this thing is actually very loud. The sound is very crisp. I love the sound. It's got a high torque Pittman motor, the electrocouplers. It also has a flickering firebox, ash pan glow, and a lighted cab. And, <laughs> and this is this is funny. I have a bunch of Pacifics. For some reason, this thing needs 054 curves. Now, my other Pacifics, which is like the Reading and Northern, the Blue Comet some of the MTH stuffs, they all run on 036 track. I don't know what it is. I thought it was the tender, to be honest with you, but when I put it on my layout, it will not take the 036 curves. And it's not the tender, actually, it's the locomotive. I don't know if the wheel spacing's a little bit different on the drive wheels, I'm assuming it is because it's a different class of locomotive. Not the end of the world. I'll take it to different shows and the clubs and stuff like that and run it, but eventually I will be doing a larger layout with bigger radius curves. And to be honest with you, when things come up like this, I try and just bite the bullet and get them because I'm looking at stuff down the line, something that I may not be able to find eventually again because these are a little bit hard to find. I know number 490 is the more valuable one, at least that's what I have been told, than 494, but I like the 494 because I like the whole George Washington theme. All right, so we're going to start up here at the front of the locomotive. This is the business end. This is really the thing on this locomotive that sold me. When I was young, I never liked the whole air pumps on the front of the boiler front. It kind of looked ugly to me, but as I got older, they just look so badass. Like, it's just such like a bulky, menacing looking locomotive, and I absolutely love it. So you have your two die cast metal air pumps here and here. I believe these are oil reservoirs. Don't quote me on that. I'm sure I'm probably wrong, but I think they're oil canisters or reservoirs you have your dummy o scale coupler up front with your coupler cut bar a little safety chain there you have your operating headlight with lighted number boards you have a little brass bell here your lighted marker lights your feed water heater and on the front of the feed water heater i don't know if you can see very well in the video but there is a silhouette of george washington the train's namesake we go down along the side here you're also going to see the nickel plated um, cylinder caps which they just look awesome as you can tell all the other stuff here is nickel plated too so it just makes the locomotive pop that much more all right continuing down along the side of the boiler you have your running gear here all die cast metal 
your white wall wheels, some more air pump apparatus that is nickel plated once again. You have your separately applied legible builder's plate, separately applied handrail, piping, pop-off valves, your brass whistle with the little whistle pull cord. You also have, I believe this is for a steam dynamo, this little stack here, not 100% certain. Here is your steam dynamo back here, and you have a bunch more separately applied detail back here. Here is the engineer side of the locomotive. Everything is pretty much essentially the same. There's some different piping and separately applied lines and different things like that here. Running gear is pretty much all the same. The number, the locomotive information, a couple more detail parts up on top of the boiler, legible builder's plates, but other than that, pretty close to being the same. Now here we go to the cab. You have a nice and legible 494 with the locomotive information right below it. You have your white painted running boards. You have sliding cab windows with the quote unquote glass that Lionel puts in it. Engineer and fireman figures and on top of the locomotive you have roof hatches that will, I can get the slide, they slide open and closed. Like I said, lighted cab interior and the cab interior will actually swing the camera around and show you. It's actually painted a really nice, like a zinc chromate green almost. The only thing I noticed about this locomotive, maybe because it's an older engine compared to some of the newer stuff, the cab light is on all the time when it's running. I personally don't mind it because I like the cab being lit up, but I just wanted to point that out. That's something a little bit different. Okay, guys, here's the inside of the cab. You have your flickering firebox here. You have your cab light. Engineer and fireman figures, I don't know if you can see, but there is some of the green on the inside of the cab roof here. The inside of the cab is also painted the same way. What I like about this is there's stuff in the cab. It looks like it's separately applied, like this throttle handle. It's not just molded into the back head. It's actually a separate thing, so it just adds that much more detail, and I absolutely love that. All right, now we come to this Leviathan. This is the tender. Now, if you guys don't know a lot about steam locomotives or trains and stuff like that, this is a tender that they call a Vanderbilt tender. It's just a different design. I'm not entirely certain what the point was of this. I think they look really cool. They had them in coal, they had them in oil burning, so there were a couple different things. I know Southern Pacific had Vanderbilt tenders, um, CNO was another biggie, Great Northern had them. You know, I think it was just personal preference. If I'm wrong, obviously correct me down in the comments, but this is the tender. Up on top, you have a separately applied coal load. You have your Chesapeake in Ohio um, logos here, and you have separately applied George Washington nameplates to the sides of the tender, so that actually indicates the specialty passenger train. You have die-cast metal trucks, wheels. There are no safety chains on these, like on the MTHs, which it's not a deal breaker. You know, it's just something different that they decided to do. Separately applied handrails, metal steps, Separately applied ladders and some more handrail detail up here. Coming around to the front of the tender, there's really not a whole lot. Most of it is molded in. There's the um, tender part of the um, coal auger right down below there because this locomotive actually didn't have a fireman that shoveled coal. He actually could mechanically put coal into the firebox by the use of a mechanical stoker. There is some cast-in detail all the way on the front of these doors here, separately applied handrails. Here's the back side of the tender. You have your operating backup light here, separately applied metal ladders, metal handrails, your locomotive number here, and the tender water and coal information, as well as an operating electrocoupler and a metal coupler cut bar right here. All right, guys, now we're gonna do the sounds for the locomotive. I'm gonna do most of my sounds inside here. But to get actual video of the locomotive running, we're going to take it outside to my test track that I have set up so you can fully appreciate all the drive gear and everything moving out there in a larger space. Because like I said, it does not take 36 curves, like I mentioned earlier, but at least you guys can see everything running. So here we go. So nice atmospheric sounds. Everything's really crisp. So the first thing I'm going to try is the whistle. Now, I'm going to try and get it to do the multi-whistle effect. It's at random. It's not a guarantee it's going to do it every other blast or every blast or whatever. But hopefully you guys will be able to hear the different tones when it happens. So, here's the whistle. Okay. 
don't know if you guys heard the blast there, but it does have a different tone and a different pitch, and it's pretty cool. Next is your bell. Real basic, simple bell. Next, you have your uh, water fill. Obviously, on the legacy of the TMCC remote, the longer that you hold that is the longer the water fill sound will continue. Next is the blowdown. Same thing. The longer you hold the button, the longer the sound will play. Next is the crew talk. I'm going to do two different types of crew talk here. So we're going to do one from the engineer's perspective and one from the tower's perspective. So here's the engineer. Here's the tower crew talk. CNO 494, you may depart. Over. Thank you, sir. 494 is clear. Help out. All right, now we're going to take it outside and I'll run it on the track out there and you guys can see it function with everything. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this is a great locomotive, even though it is a little bit of an older model from Lionel. You can find them. They do pop up on eBay and things like that. If you're looking for something different and unique and not your standard run-of-the-mill Pacific, I highly suggest you get one of these. They pop up in the price range anywhere from around $900 to $1,000, depending on what they are. I think they're entirely worth it. I hope you enjoyed it, and keep an eye out for the next video. Take care.